USC head coach Clay Helton will be staying for another season, but many fans are not happy about it. And heavy rain hit Southern California. We'll show you how the storm is impacting the Los Angeles community. And college professors spoke at the impeachment hearing on whether President Trump violated the Constitution. Reaction coming up next. Annenberg TV News is next. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. It's official. USC head coach Clay Helton will be returning for his fifth full season next year. Under coach Clay Helton, the Trojans finished in second place in the Pac-12 South. Good evening. I'm Cecil Hannibal. And I'm Kelly Miller. Our sports anchor Noah Cameras has more on the big news for football fans. Bones tweet reads, quote, I am pleased to let you know Coach Helton will continue to be our head coach. His commitment to vital to restoring our championship program, which is the goal for all of our teams. Fans we talked to are not happy about Bones' decision. I mean, we did have a pretty good season this year, but I don't think that was it's any hard. thanks to him. I mean, at the same time, our team is young, a lot can still happen, so it's a, a lot of it's uncertain. I don't think it's like necessarily all like a bad thing. Utilize them, he's not smart in his play calling, he doesn't know what he's doing, and again, he's tarnishing the legacy of USC football, which is very disappointing as a USC, longtime USC football fan. Helton said he appreciates the support from President Fulton AD Mike Bone. We'll have more about what Helton had to say later on in sports. Back over to you, Cecil. Thanks, Noah. Some much needed rain created some hassles today across Southern California. Our reporter, Elizabeth Meneses, has the story on how it's impacting LA residents. Today's severe storm created dangerous driving conditions across the Los Angeles area, upsetting many residents. I noticed people are pulling out in front of people when they shouldn't be. They're not driving at the speed they should be in the rain. I moved here from the Midwest, so I was trained since I was a kid on how to drive in snow and wet, and I don't feel like people out here get that, you know. Another issue in Los Angeles when it rains is where homeless people can go to stay dry. A homeless shelter in the city is working to provide resources for those in need. Located near Skid Row, the Midnight Mission is one of the shelters involved in a new winter shelter program. The Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority launched the program because of the severe weather conditions. So during the, the rainy season, um, and when it's even cold outside, it doesn't have to be raining. It can be in, you know, in the 40s, usually if it dips below 50 degrees, or especially if it's raining, um, we will allow folks from the community to come in and, and stay safely in our uh, dining hall. Weiner adds that many of the homeless are just happy to have a dry and warm place to spend the night. For Annenberg Media, I'm Isabella Meneses. The heavy rains and cooler temperatures are definitely having an impact on the homeless. Reporter L Lorena Bordereau looks into what the city is doing to help. The city has just opened nearly 700 emergency shelters for those living in the streets. That's welcome news given today's torrential rains. But Major Garcetti says the federal government's decision to cut food stamps for hundreds of thousands in the country could not have come at a worse time. Blanca Humada is a mother of five who has experienced homelessness. Sometimes, you know, for one reason or another, they, you know, they raise your rent um, and you just don't have enough. They throw you out and it's hard, like, it's hard, really, really difficult. According to the California Student Aid Commission, nearly one out of every three students experience house and food insecurity in the state. LAUSD superintendent says the number of students affected by housing is worse than official numbers suggest. The city is offering 500 vouchers to help students with housing insecurity. But that's not enough considering the number of students in need of shelter. For Annenberg Media, I'm Lorena Bouteveo. 
Members of the House Judiciary Committee held their first impeachment hearings. Annenberg Media's Nathan Hyun has more on today's events. Nathan? Thanks, guys. Democrats invited three constitutional scholars to testify that President Trump's conduct toward Ukraine rises to the next level of impeachment. Republicans brought their own constitutional expert who says he is not convinced. This would be the first impeachment in history where there would be considerable debate, and in my view, not compelling evidence of the commission of a crime. But everything I read on those occasions tells me that when President Trump invited, indeed demanded foreign involvement in our upcoming election, he struck at the very heart of what makes this a republic to which we pledge allegiance. Democratic and Republican leaders each got 45 minutes to ask questions, and every member of the committee got five minutes. Today's hearing lasted for more than eight hours. USC professor Robert Trump talked about the significance of today's events. What the Republicans have is a defense case to make, but they don't have any substance to it. So they have to use everything they can grab onto to try to gum up the works. The professors that were brought to the hearings are all constitutional law experts. So they set the framework and the standards as to whether or not what the president has done is an impeachable offense. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi held a closed-door meeting this morning and asked the Democrats this question, are you ready? The answer was a resounding yes. The Democrats could begin drafting articles of impeachment in a matter of days, which means the full House could vote by Christmas. Back to you guys. Annenberg Media talked to faculty and students from USC's law school, and they agreed with the analysis of Stan Stanford Law Professor Pamela Carlin. She was one of four constitutional law scholars who spoke at the hearing today. What has happened in the case today is something that I do not think we have ever seen before. A president who has doubled down on violating his oath to faithfully execute the laws and to protect and defend the Constitution. And I think Pamela did a great job today of kind of um, destroying some of those arguments in that she, she made it very clear that she's not simply here to pander or to make a political statement. She's here to say that this is exactly what the framers wanted. Uh, Professor Carlin did a wonderful job of talking about how the, um, the framers of the Constitution were thinking about uh, bribery in, in, in the sense of uh, abusing your office and trying to solicit um, some type of uh, thing of value for personal gain. Tonight, the House Judiciary Committee is expected to announce the next hearing. Members are expected to examine the findings from the 300-page Intelligence Committee report. The 2020 primary elections are just four months away. But before anyone casts a ballot, Los Angeles County is making some big changes to the voting system. L.A. County officials demonstrated a new touchscreen voting system des designed to make voting easier. The L.A. County Registrar explains why this new system is better than the old one. The main difference is on the old system, uh, you voted on one day at one location. So you as a voter were assigned to a particular location that you voted on a random Tuesday. Now that's, uh, we, we've busted that wide open where we have voting over an 11-day voting period and you can go and vote at any location in the county. So we'll have vote centers that are in um, city halls and libraries, but also in retail areas and college campuses and, and that type of thing. So again, where people are congregated, our intent is to have a voting location. It's important to note that the machines will print a paper ballot so each voter can verify before casting. Voters can read or listen thir in 13 different language options. The iPad-like device is not connected to the internet for security reasons. When I spoke to L.A. County officials today, they all had hope that this system will encourage people to vote while making it making the process easier. It's woman. It's Wednesday, and that means we are back with another Woman Crush Wednesday. We'll hear from Annenberg Dean Willow Bay. I'm excited for that one. And the holiday season is right around the corner. In order to stay safe, we'll show what precautions DPS says you should take. Instagram and the Jed Foundation are holding an event today addressing the pressures Instagram causes to its users. We'll take you there coming up next. Meet the scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. 
If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. Being prepared is a part of who you are. But it's especially important in the case of a disaster. Be informed about possible emergencies in your area. Make a plan that covers where you go in an emergency. Build a kit with the things you need to survive. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. Start your plan today. Go to ready.gov slash my plan. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where'd Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, oh, there she is. Pa? Do you remember being an ancient wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. In less than two weeks, DPS says 48 petty theft cases were reported. So as students make plans to head back home for winter break, Assistant Chief David Carlisle offers these crime prevention tips. It's pretty simple. We have a saying here at USC, lock it, hide it, keep it. Because they know every student has a laptop, iPad, smartphone, and if they leave it behind and they don't lock their residential hall door or their apartment door if they're living off campus, they're vulnerable. So one, you make sure you lock your doors. Two, lock away your valuables or take them with you. Three, make it look like someone's home. Leave some lights on. Maybe leave a radio on with the local news station or music. Giving To report any suspicious behavior, crimes, or emergencies, contact DPS at 213-740-4321. Tonight, Instagram and the Jed Foundation are at Ground Zero Cafe, speaking on the pressure that social media causes. Our reporter Evan Falstrip has more on this. I'm here at the USC Ground Zero Cafe, where Instagram and the Jed Foundation have partnered up to host the Pressure to Be Perfect event, which speaks about mental health and the pressures of self-image and using Instagram. I spoke earlier with some of the panelists here to get the inside scoop. USC can start um, stepping away from this value of appearance and, um, you know, leaving these amazing happy lives in SoCal and instead focus on what's important, which is the relationships we're building, how we feel about ourselves. If we wake up every day and we work hard, and we're the best version of ourselves. So to start prioritizing those things. I am hopeful with this that we can help give people those tools that we can get back to where Instagram was when it first was created where people just are posting for what you want to post and makes you excited and you don't have to really get caught up in the pressure around it. So now the two hour event is now wrapping up where guests have been invited to just hang out, lounge, um, speak with some of the panelists, grab some free food, even speak with the celebrity or hang out with the celebrity Corgi which is uh, here. It, the event was great. Um, but more importantly, some of the more important topics they spoke about were mental health issues, right, the pressures of using this app once again, the pressures of being in Gen Z, and, and so on. And so this is, this is very close to home for many students here at USC. And you, Instagram is implementing this new toolkit, which they presented tonight, which is now available to all users, which helps users, um, you know, feel less pressure, you know, for likes and the number of followers they have. So make sure to check out that toolkit, which is now available on Instagram today. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Evan. You know, see, so I, I really think Instagram is making a lot of good changes. And did you hear that they're even maybe taking away the likes on photos? You know, and I, I, I like it, but I also am going to miss my likes. You know, kind of, it makes me feel good, doesn't you it? You get a lot. You get a lot. No, not too many. You, you get all the likes. You're the goat. You know that. Well, you know, it's raining. It's, it's been raining uh, for the Still past. Still raining. For a while now, um, since the last time we did the show. Uh, it is raining today. Let's check in with Ari Taylor for the weather. Yes, let's get into it, mi gente. The song for today's vibe is Truth Hurts by Lizzo. Current conditions are cloudy, 62 degrees, so have an umbrella on standby. So moving on to tomorrow's weather, bringing it out inland, I should say. 63 degrees in both San Bernardino and Riverside. Now bringing it out to the coast, y'all know it's my absolute favorite place in the world. Bring it in, in 60 degrees in the 60s all the way around Thousand Oaks to Malibu area. And now 
bringing it back home to the place you know we all love. USC, 65 degrees, and in our flights and not feelings forecast, 65 degrees also. So looking ahead uh, for the rest of the week, looking like mid-60s and cloudy with expected showers on Saturday. So y'all, the National Weather Service issued a flood watch warning earlier today for Los Angeles County. Most areas can expect up to an inch and an inch and a half of rain. I spoke to commuter students to see how the rain has affected their travels. The roads were horrific to say the least. Uh, it was very, obviously it was very wet. Today I was two hours, it took me two hours to get to school and I was 30 minutes late. You have like half the drivers going slower than normal and the other half just kind of skidding and being a little bit more um, carefree when it comes to driving. Conditions are expected to settle down by the end of the night, but more rain is expected this weekend. Guys, I need to know where my sunny Southern California went. I love the rain. I'm here for it. <laughs> oh, no. Keep the rain coming, please. Oh, no. Thank you, Art, for amazing <laughs> coverage as always. Yep. And for our final Woman Crush Wednesday, our guest is Willow Bay. She's the first female dean of USC's journalism school, and she's anchored on both ABC and CNN's Moneyline. I talked to Dean Bay about her career in journalism. From the time I was a kid, I wanted to be a reporter. And I think I wanted to be a reporter. I'm not even sure I even knew what the word journalist was. Mm -hmm. I just loved the idea of telling other people's stories. I remember when I got the job as co-anchor of Moneyline, it was the first time a woman had had that job. It was still a time when they said, wow, we don't know whether men want to get bad financial news from a woman. It's one thing when the markets are up, we're not so sure. I mean, literally, that's what people said then, and it wasn't that long right. ago. So what did you tell um, people, men and women, maybe when they saw you in that seat, that business seat, the first co-anchor, what did you tell them when they kind of denied you because you were a woman going into business? I didn't tell them anything. I did the job. I sat in the seat, put the mic on, and did the job. And I did it because I was incredibly prepared, I was incredibly curious, and I was profoundly grateful for the opportunity. What does it take to be a successful journalist today? So curiosity, ethics, a relentless attention to detail, an enormous amount of compassion. What's it like being the dean of <laughs> USC Annenberg? It is both a joy and a privilege to come to work here every day, and I have felt that from the moment I set foot on this campus. What would you tell your 25-year-old <laughs> self? Speak up. I think one of the reasons that I was attracted to being a journalist is that I'm more comfortable asking questions um, than speaking in public or sharing opinions or um, even just frankly vo right, voicing ideas in public, particularly as a young person. So I would have told my younger self, use your voice, speak up. I asked Dean Bay what advice she would give to a young woman hoping to succeed as a journalist. She said the advice would be the same for a man or a woman. Be true to yourself, and if it doesn't feel true to you, then it's not right. Wow, what an amazing interview. Listen, Dean Willow has all of the gems. She's she amazing. She has so much to say, so much to share. And you guys have a lot to say today. A lot a to lot say. A lot of news with USC Sports. What's going on? Breaking news today. When we come back, we'll tell you what Clay Helton had to say about returning for the 2020 season. We'll also tell you how one prominent member of the media reacted to the news. Plus, we'll make sense of reported interest between Texas and USC offensive coordinator Graham Harrell. All this and more when we come back. Get it. Get it. Get it. Give your town a reason to celebrate. Because every Goodwill item you bring home brings job training and more to your community. Goodwill. Bring good home. I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Oh. 
Honorary Forest Ranger Betty White here, lending a hand to my dear friend Smokey Bear. Because for 75 years, he's only said... Only you can prevent wildfires. But there's a lot more to say. Like, if you park your car on tall, dry grass, the hot exhaust pipe can start a wildfire. So keep the animals safe, especially the cute shirtless one. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Welcome back to ATVN. In case you missed it, USC Athletic Director Mike Bone has shockingly announced that he will retain Clay Helton as head coach. In an interview with the LA Times, Bone said that he did not pursue any other coaching candidates besides Clay Helton, despite lots of speculation that he would. Here's what Clay had to say. It is abundantly clear that we now have the support, resources, and tools to build a championship team. He went on to say, we know the expectations from our fans are high, as they should be. Those are the expectations I have for myself and for our staff and team as well. LA Times columnist and USC alum Arash Markazi took to Twitter to air his thoughts on the decision. He said, I'm glad USC brought in a new president and new AD to keep a football coach hired by the previous regime. Strong words from Arash. Also notable Jake Olson commented on the matter, telling fans to shut up and, uh, and accept the decision, basically replying to Mike Bone's tweet. While the decision to retain Clay Helton has sent shockwaves throughout campus, another USC coach's status may be up in the air as well. That's right, Trevor. While Clay Helton has been at the center of attention, Graham Harrell's name has also swirled around the rumor mill as it has been reported that Texas head coach Tom Herman has reached out to Harrell in regards to their vacant offensive coordinator position. Harrell does have some ties to Texas as he played quarterback for Texas Tech in college and was the North Texas offensive coordinator prior to his stint with USC. However, Ryan Cartge, a USC beat writer for the LA Times, tweeted today that Harrell is currently in Texas recruiting for USC. Now, when you look at the numbers, Harrell would clearly be a massive loss for the Trojans' offense. The Trojans have scored around one more touchdown a game and have accumulated around 80 more yards per game since Harrell took over. Additionally, Harrell has helped quarterback Keaton Slovis thrive in his system, and it would not be beneficial for Slovis' development to have to start over next season with a new offense. But who even knows if Slovis will be the starter next right. year, as JT Daniels' dad told 24-7 Sports Today that, quote, JT is definitely staying and he hopes to compete for the starting job so next season. we didn't season. have enough news today, right? More than enough today. This comes after reports speculating that JT would transfer due to his injury and the emergence of Slovis. So that's another step Huge for story, yeah. Coach Helton to figure out. Absolutely. Speaking of Helton, I want to circle back a little bit to the new, uh, the Clay Helton news, Trevor. We've heard a lot of uh, reaction from fans and players on the Clay Helton news, that's a, a decision, and there's so much to unpack with the situation. So I want to start by asking you, what does this situation, or this decision to retain Coach Helton mean? My biggest takeaway right now is just the fan reaction, both on Twitter, and I was walking around campus asking uh, USC students what they thought, and their answers range from anger to outright rage. So in the short term, this could have a serious effect on attendance numbers and booster donations, but Boone clearly saw something in Helton's leadership that made him decide to keep with the keep with him at the helm of the program. Yes, we know Helton will be there, but like I said before, we don't know about Graham Harrell. Do you think that any part of this Clay Helton decision will now affect Graham Harrell's decision in a positive way, a negative way? What do you think? I think there's more of a chance now that Graham Harrell does stay now that Clay Helton's back. I think if Clay Helton was dismissed, then Graham Harrell uh, would have certainly moved on because somebody else would have brought in their, o uh, their OC. But at the same time, it's still very much up in the air. But I think Mike Bone and Clay Helton really that they have to do everything in their power to make sure Graham Harrell's still on the staff. You mentioned it, how much improvement the offense saw. I think he was a big reason for USC's improvement from 2018 to 2019. So expect them to make uh, maybe even up his contract to keep Graham Harrell at Troy. So we know Helton will be here next year. The mm -hmm. question mark is still with Graham Harrell. But now that we at least have some certainty in this program, what do you think is next for Clay Helton, Mike Bone, and the rest of the staff? I think there are two immediate steps. Number one, uh, now they can go to all these recruits. We've been talking about this recruiting class, 70 seventh in the nation, all that stuff. But now they can finally go to recruits and at least say who the coach is going to be in 2020. So that's the big takeaway. Number two, it's going to be all about the assistant coaches now. What happens to the special teams coordinator? What happens to defensive coordinator Clancy Pendergast? Now we'll see what other shakeups remain on, US, on USC's coaching staff. Yeah, so we can definitely hope that this news at least provides some certainty I like for certainty. USC football we moving like forward. Maybe we'll see what happens with Harrell. Hopefully he can stay, work with Slovis or JT, work with the offense, and keep this team moving forward. We definitely want to take steps backward after an 8-4 and four season, mm -hmm. so hopefully this provides some more certainty. For the last time this semester, that's all we have for sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Wow, what a duo. Thank you, Trevor and Noah, for all your sports coverage this semester.
Here on ATVN, we try our best to give the highest quality news. But sometimes we have bumps in the road, actually a lot. Some <laughs> bloopers coming up next. It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. My parents weren't fluent in English, so in school, I had to be independent and take initiative. And that's how I handle every project I get. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? You know, Kelly, things don't always go as planned here at ATVN. So for our last Wednesday show of the semester, here's a look at some of our favorite bloopers. I'm just like Oprah said, you get an 80, you get an 80, and you get an 80. It's totally lovely. And now we have our saw. <laughs> but I do get a nice 10 minute results of a sexual assault survey. Let's look over at San, Fer San Bernard. Do you know 98 degrees? There are none who support, but 100, uh, yeah, they're cool. And I'm Elizabeth Baranel. One, if you're heading over, bring a student ID. None who support 183. Uh, allow security prison. I have not. USC Viterbi developed a digital tool used to assess movie and TV. Good morning, Tom, everyone. I don't know much about it, but I'm excited to see. I'm excited to figure it out, to learn more. Can we go back to the mac and cheese? Let's go back. And 14 who are still waiting to respond. Thank you, Nicola. As fans and our school, and we're going to be cheering for them regardless. Lorenzo opens a pop-up shop in downtown LA. We'll give you an inside look. You know, coming up after the break, uh, we're going to go back to the Democratic debate, and we'll see our reporter with an update. And back to you at the desk. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. That was a really great story. Uh and well, the and well. But the real winner had to be the furry feline who made history, running a 4.19 40-yard dash. A 4.19? That's that's. Anime Media's Evan Froshoff is live in downtown LA with more. Evan. Here are the annual Christmas delays. Hello there. I'm. I challenge you anytime. I'm the best, but you can never beat me. I will definitely beat you. <laughs> never. I'll work you. I'll never, work you. Never. I'm challenging you, Amon Ra, to a game of FIFA. I hear you guys have a bye week next week. You're not busy. Look at all that marathon banter. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Wait for some time. Yeah, the people. <laughs> Incredible stuff. That was great stuff. I mean, you know, it, it's a beautiful moment. This is our last show, and and I, it's Cecil's very last show ever, well, ever, it's, ever. It's my, it's my, it's my last show as an anchor at ATV. In three semesters in a row, it's been an honor. I love this team. I love you guys. They need to put a plaque up in the studio for right. you, man. You're a legend in this place. That was man. the biggest flex of all time. You were like, thanks, semester. Really. <laughs> it's you been, know. it's been amazing. Well, for the last time. From me, thanks for watching Edinburgh TV News. From everyone at Edinburgh Media, I'm Cecil Hannibal. And I'm Kelly Miller. You can watch us on the web at uscannenbergmedia.com. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Good night.